time for Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. Record heat's on tap for the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley, and Southern Appalachians, as well as the Mid-Atlantic. But relief is on the way. Active thunderstorms, heavy rains, flash flooding, and severe weather are possible over large portions of the north-central to east-central U.S. Fire weather threats for portions of the northwest and northern Rockies, along with early season high elevation snow. Closer to home, daily shower and storm chances continue with a decrease in chances for next week. Temperatures are going to be right at or just below normal. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. At last night, Talamogordo City Commission meeting, just two new items. Consider and act upon declaring 1409 Crescent Drive no longer so ruined, damaged, and dilapidated that it's a menace to public comfort, health, peace, or safety. 1409 Crescent was condemned a few months ago. I don't remember exactly when it's on the slide. Um, but it is no longer a dilapidated structure, but a beautiful structure. Property has been repaired and approved to be removed from condemned status. That passed 7-0. to zero. Also, consider and act upon the final plat for fairground subdivision. One idea that goes along with that is this. Roundabouts are a, a true new uh, method of moving people around, not, not so much in Europe, but here they are. Uh, but a lot of your cities, even in, in Texas where I was at, a lot of the cities are going to the roundabouts and they're, they're really pretty phenomenal after you get used to them and, and understand how they work. Uh, and they do, in fact, uh, have a great way to slow traffic down and yet get traffic moving through the community without a lot of starting and stopping. Which brings this to mind. I guess what we do is just drive around this circle here. It should be the second left exit. There's a hotel. Okay. Hey, look, kids. There's Big Ben and there's Parliament. There it is, there it is, there it is. I know. I can't seem to get over to the left, honey. I'll try next time. Sorry. We'll get out of this jam in a minute. Kids. Big Ben, Parliament again. Commissioner Warren Robinson was just a tad excited about it. Okay, so do I have a motion? Um, Move to approve. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve item 7? Move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Robinson. It passed 6 to 0, 1 abstained. The Tularosa Municipal School District has recently identified an outbreak of bed bugs within the district. Bed bugs are a common household pest that while not known to spread disease, they can cause significant discomfort and distress. The district is taking immediate and thorough action to address the situation and ensure the safety and well-being of the students, staff, and community. If you have any questions, please check out the Tularosa Municipal Schools District Facebook page. Local, state, and federal authorities are holding a town hall in Redoso this week to update residents on recovery efforts following the recent wildfires and flooding. Residents impacted by the South Fork and Salt fires, as well as the burn scar flash flooding, will have a chance to ask questions about the recovery to the experts. The town hall meeting is tonight at 6.30 at the Redoso Middle School. A Zoom link will be available for people to watch. A recording of the meeting will be available on the New Mexico Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management Facebook page. The Tularosa Basin Regional Dispatch Authority meeting is scheduled for Friday, August 30th at 9 a.m. and is going to be held at the Otero County Administration Building. If you have any questions, please check out the Otero County Administration Facebook page. The Alamogordo Public Schools Homecoming Dance Clothing Closet is open now, featuring gently worn formal wear in a variety of sizes at no cost for students who need homecoming attire. If you have any questions, Call 575-430-0191 or send an email to hope at alamogordoschools.org. The village of Tularosa was recently told the current method of watering the village roses and other flowers is unsafe. A proposal is to have the New Mexico Department of Transportation install sprinklers to conserve energy and make the method safe. We're told that our current watering system is not safe. Our main volunteer, Rusty, he um, drives his truck with a trailer and two water tanks, and he waters the, all the roses in the median by hand with the hose from the water tank. Greg Gutierrez speaking with Crazy Radio. Being that they're concerned about safety, honestly, the only safe solution would be for them to install sprinklers. 
like a drip system is what I'm thinking that could run off of the irrigation ditches, you know, it, and we can also implement some water saving gardening techniques that will help to minimize the amount of water being used. You can sign the petition by visiting change.org slash sprinklers for Thule. Well, today is Wednesday. That means we go now to Stephanie Hale to see what's happening this week at Thrive. Hi, this is Stephanie Hale with Thrive in Southern New Mexico. Thrive in Southern New Mexico brings together local nonprofits and resources to all of our Otero and Lincoln County residents. Each year, Thrive hosts the annual campaign to fund local nonprofit programs that help in education, health, and the well-being of our residents. Local nonprofits may apply for the Thrive in Southern New Mexico grant now. Applications may be picked up at the Thrive office located at 1601 East 10th Street in Alamogordo or on our website, letsthrivenm.org. Applications will be accepted through September 27th. If selected, nonprofits will be invited to participate in the funds allocation process. Once the agency is chosen as a Thrive partner, they will receive free advertising on social media, radio, and television ads, the Thrive website, and the annual Thrive Campaign magazine. Again, the Thrive Grant application is open now and closes September 27th for the 2025 campaign. Selected programs will receive funding in 2026. You can reach us at 575-437-8400 at 1601 10th Street in Alamogordo or jump on our website, letsthrivenm.org. That's it for this week. I'm Stephanie Hale with Thrive in Southern New Mexico. And I'll be back next week and every Wednesday right here on Crazy Radio. News from around the state in just a moment. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. Local news from local perspectives, from local voices. AlamogordoTownNews.org. Local sports, local events, and local happenings and more. Nonprofit owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. AlamogordoTownNews.org. Heard daily on Crazy KALH Radio 95.1. Direct Free Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. With its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side, Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. Two alleged child predators have reportedly taken a plea deal after they were arrested during an undercover operation by the New Mexico Department of Justice. 52-year-old Fernando Clyde and 29-year-old Marlon Kellywood each faced charges of child solicitation by electronic communication device and attempted criminal sexual penetration of a minor. They're both pleading guilty to those charges. A New Mexico Department of Justice spokesperson says the deal for both Clyde and Kellywood calls for them to serve a nine-year sentence with at least five to seven years behind bars. After they get out, the deal calls for them to register as a sex offender and serve five to 20 years of supervised parole. A judge will iron out the terms during sentencing, which the court has scheduled for October 29th. Agents also arrested 47-year-old Christopher Reynolds as part of the operation. Reynolds faces one count of child solicitation by electronic communications. Law enforcement officials say he also has to register as a sex offender in Texas after he sexually assaulted a 15-year-old family member. The court has a September 5th change of plea hearing on the docket for Reynolds. The Gallup police were called to a Safeway on Monday afternoon to reports of a stabbing. Callers reported a 44-year-old man was stabbed in the stomach in an unprovoked attack. Police arrived on scene and arrested the subject, 41-year-old Sheila James, who was inside the Safeway. James faces charges including attempted murder and aggravated battery. The victim was taken to the Gallup Indian Medical Center, where he is in stable condition. Homelessness is a crisis that touches every corner of New Mexico. Secretary of the New Mexico Department of Health, Patrick Allen, points out that we're not just talking about something that happens in Albuquerque or Santa Fe. Matter of fact, you can look around here and see it. In front of the Legislative Health and Human Services Committee on Monday morning, the NMDOH updated lawmakers on the Mobile Homelessness Response Demonstration Project. For this project, the state invested $4 million to partner with community organizations and to build mobile responses in rural New Mexico across 19 counties. In no way is talking about mobile outreach intended to sort of be an end-all, be-all of this is how we deal with homelessness in New Mexico. This is how we deal with a slice of it that we think is important. Through the project, organizations were able to meet with more than 3,000 individuals to provide services. San Juan County Partnership is just one of the participating groups and said through the funding, 
they were able to set up a mobile office, buy a wheelchair accessible van, and to purchase a second vehicle that can go over rural terrain to reach individuals. The project included a collaboration with the University of New Mexico to survey the unhoused community and put together their findings. Secretary Allen says there are resources to continue funding the project and that they are working with the governor's office on the budget. Conley Elementary School in Las Cruces is dealing with mold, forcing some students and one teacher to move to a different classroom. The Las Cruces Public School System ordered multiple air quality samples after a 4 by 6 inch patch of mold was found on a wall in one of the Conley classrooms. The multiple tests and samples showed the air in the classroom in question and its closet had mold spore numbers between 333 and 2112 per cubic meter. Mold analyzing companies list anything under 1,500 counts per cubic meter in the room's air as safe. The district says the elevated numbers in the closet led to students and their teacher to be moved from that classroom, and more tests around the school may be run after the district analyzes the full mold report, which they're expecting to be tomorrow. In the meantime, they are taking every precaution that they can, including installing an air filtration system. Superintendent Ignacio Ruiz spoke with KVIA. We've listened to our teachers. I have met with the staff over there working closely with the principal, with the teachers union, just to make sure that, again, our first priority is the safety of our children, the safety of our teachers. He adds, based on the information they have now, the entirety of Conley will not need to be evacuated, but more will be known after that full mold report becomes available tomorrow. Ruiz also reports that a couple of teachers are sick. Texas Governor Greg Abbott told KTSM that he wants to continue building a border wall between Texas and New Mexico. Most of the El Paso sector is actually in New Mexico. Uh, and because of the, the wiring job that we did around El Paso, crossings there are few and far between. There are, however, people who cross from Mexico into New Mexico uh, and then right over into El Paso. And that's something we have to deal with. I think you may remember there was a time that we are in the process of working to increase where we're, we're building a border wall, not just between Texas and Mexico, but also between Texas and New Mexico because of those illegal crossings coming into El Paso. Abbott's operation Lone Star has faced challenges in court where the Biden administration has argued that Abbott is overstepping his authority, but illegal crossings into Texas have reduced by 85%. No response from New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham on the proposed border wall. Texas also recently cleaned up their voter rolls. They report over 6,500 illegals were registered to vote in the Lone Star State. Makes one wonder about the land of enchantment, does it not? Sports and weather are coming up next. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in New Mexico is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, it just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the New Mexico Activities Association and the New Mexico Athletic Directors Association. There are six matches for New Mexico girls volleyball today, including Loving at Gateway Christian. Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for mostly sunny skies with a 60% chance of showers and storms. New rainfall amounts less than a tenth of an inch expected, winds gusting up to 11 miles per hour. Mostly cloudy skies tonight with a 40% chance of showers and storms. Sunny tomorrow with a 50% chance of showers and storms, winds gusting up to 12 miles per hour. Your high today in the basin, 87, low tonight of 66, high tomorrow, 90 degrees. In Cloudcroft, partly sunny skies today with a 70% chance of showers and storms. New rainfall amounts between a quarter to a half inch expected. Winds gusting up to 10 miles per hour. Mostly cloudy skies tonight with a 40% chance of showers and storms. Winds gusting as high as 10. Mostly sunny tomorrow with a 70% chance of more showers and storms. Your high today in Cloudcroft, 64, low tonight of 48, high tomorrow of 66 degrees. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.org, and learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting KALHradio.org. Also check out the Crazy KALH Radio YouTube channel. That's where we post our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. That way you too can remain informed of the goings-on in the Tularosa Basin.
And that concludes today's edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero.